Our group has designed an informational workshop for adults with physical disabilities. So our goal is to link adults with physical disabilities to businesses in the community who are hiring. We will partner with well-established organizations in Louisville to get the word out to career-seeking individuals. Um, Bright Star Care and Center for Accessible Living provide different levels of assistance to uh, individuals with disabilities, including home care, independent living assistance, transportation assistance, independent living skills training, peer support, individual, and systems advocacy. Uh, both organizations can provide a limited amount of transportation assistance for our event. Uh, we will invite businesses that are hiring and able to provide accommodations for the individuals that we are looking to serve. We understand that the range of physical disabilities is very broad. They may include visual impairments, hearing impairments, muscular disorders, epilepsy, injury, asthma, speech-related disabilities, and the list goes on. Um, this will be communicated to the businesses that we reach out to so that they understand uh, what we would like them to speak on at our event. Participating businesses will be given a table to showcase their opportunities, how they will meet the needs of our population, and they will also meet with individuals who are looking for jobs um, that choose to come to our event in person. Our workshop will also be held um, online. So it will be at a handicap accessible event space, but shared online for people who would like to attend that way as well. We hope to reach the entire community by advertising at independent living facilities, on social media platforms, and on event boards at local libraries. The option to join virtually will be handled by a local business that has volunteered to record short videos for each hiring manager or business. Um, it will allow them to introduce themselves and speak briefly about the jobs they're looking to fill. Speakers at the workshop, so that will be the four of us, uh, will also record our video presentations to upload um, to our social media platforms. Um, Millennial Productions, uh, this local business, it's a startup in Louisville. Uh, they are able to broadcast videos in real time on YouTube and Facebook and also give us the recordings to keep. Um, so the majority of the workshop will be able to viewed at, be viewed at a later time. A list of participating businesses and organizations we've partnered with will be available for those who attend virtually or uh, watch in the future as well. So this is a simple organizational chart. It outlines the responsibilities of the co-coordinators on the day of the workshop. So I'm Sophia Du. I will work with Bright Star Care to reach the population we are trying to serve. I will also do a presentation about the four S's, which I will briefly explain on the next slide. Angela Parnell will work with Millennial Productions to oversee the virtual workshop and upload recordings to our social media platforms. She will also do a presentation on education and physical disabilities. Dara Davis will work with local businesses, restaurants, mom and pop shops, salons, etc. to get volunteers to come to our workshop. She will do a presentation on getting connected with resources. Aretha Hurt will work with larger businesses in our community, such as UPS and Humana, um, to get volunteers from them to come to our workshop. And then she will do a presentation on working from home. We also, on this slide, don't include other people that will work with us. Okay, so attracting our audience. Um, our social media pages on Facebook and Instagram will be created to promote um, the event and make it clear that we understand what inclusion really Really means for individuals with physical disabilities. Um, we, we know that some individuals may need help with resumes and getting ready for job interviews, life skills, while others may be college graduates who are struggling to secure a position in the workplace. Um, it's very important to note that while the number of college students with physical disabilities is steadily increasing, those same students have a harder time securing employment after graduation than their peers without physical disabilities. Um, needs and aspirations, um, that's another thing that we really want people to understand, the businesses that we're working with to understand, the, you know, the agencies that we're partnering with. Um, understanding needs and especially aspirations is important because rates of unemployment for individuals with disabilities doesn't necessarily mean that there's a lack of motivation in the community. Um, career aspirations are high for students with physical disabilities um, getting a higher education. One study showed that about 15% of these students reported wanting jobs like corporate executives and doctors. About 79% reported wanting careers like business managers and educators. In that same study, 95% of 
participants said that they desire to help others through their work, and that's something that's very important to them. Um, so to help secure jobs and set career paths for this population, it is necessary for organizations, businesses, and people who are advocates to understand their aspirations. Likewise, individuals going into the workforce for the first time often need family involvement, program structure, interagency collaboration, student-focused planning, and student development. Presenting tools and information for success. So each member of our team will prepare a five to 10 minute presentation for the event. So I'll do the presentation on the four S's, which are the first one is situation factors. So this is how an individual views their control over their life and career. This may change over the lifetime for an individual with a physical disability, but oftentimes these factors enhance stress. The second of the four S's is self-related factors. So that could be age, socioeconomic status, gender, and other self-related factors that can have an effect on how an individual deals with their disability. The third of the four S's is supportive factors. So that's friends, family, mentors, agencies, and outside sources that can have a huge impact on the ability to work and live independently with a disability. The fourth of the four S's is strategies. So this is coping mechanisms for stress and adverse events that may happen. How does the individual react to their environment? I would do a presentation on that for anyone who is at the event or anyone who chooses to attend virtually. The virtual workshop and resources will be available on our social media platforms indefinitely. The idea is that the physical event, you know, this may only last the day, but the goal will be to continue to share information and resources gathered at this event for months to come. Ultimately, the hope is that our event helps individuals with physical disabilities, business owners, hiring managers, and helping organizations to connect with one another and change each other's lives. Okay, administering workshop tools provided by Inclusion Incorporated. While at the workshop, attending employment specialists will take the time to get to know the person. This will allow the employment specialist to get to know the person's interests, strengths, weaknesses, and what work supports would be needed or explored. The work specialist will need to meet with the person seeking employment or education to help the person learn about the operations and their needs. The employment specialist will then recommend ways to be able to create work opportunities for the person seeking a job and describe different work supports that will help assist the person on the job if and when they are hired. If both the employer and the person seeking the job are both in agreement at the meeting. Running the program, we have co-coordinators, which is Sophia Dew, Dara Davis, myself, Aretha Hurt, and these roles were explained in an organizational chart by Sophia. In assistance, they will answer the phones, send emails, schedule follow-up appointments. The director will write grants, oversee Inclusion Incorporated. Human resources, which will be, they will find volunteers, they will help do payroll, ensure equal opportunities in workshop and Inclusion Incorporated. What theories and techniques are utilized? So person environment, perspective looks at the interactions between people environment and the potential occupations. Person environment perspective is said to go hand in hand with potential interventions to help this perspective with career and higher education counseling. The article found address students and their transition from high school into college, but components can be applied to adults and those transitioning out of a continued program in school or into a job for the first time. This perspective acknowledges that career development can be influenced by environment. Problem-solving methods and perspective uh, skills may lack in the disabled population. Acknowledging this validates the client's experiences as well as advocates for their needs. Using this perspective, it will allow there to be a focus on the complex nature of the issues and that be applied to diverse populations. Utilizing this theory will allow for our informational workshop to help meet the attendees where they are, receive a better understanding of how clients' environments influence them as workers and students, and to better understand their needs as workers and students to help them get to the place that works for them best. What resources would support this program? Um, what kinds and how much? So some resources to help Inclusion Incorporated continue helping those with disabilities get jobs or continue their education. One, in-person counseling. Two, training. Three, support. Four, services that help people find jobs and or continue their education. Four, we will have grants. Um, the director will find and apply for these. 
um, six will have donations as we are a nonprofit organization. What career, a vocational, educational, occupational, and labor market information resources and career information systems are relevant and will be useful to this project? Educational resources. There are many decisions to be made about the future of someone with a disability when it comes to education. Most seem as if college isn't an option for them, but there are adult education programs, training programs, and certifications available, such as life skill programs. Programs. Although in some cases others need more concentrative services, most schools allow those students to participate in life skill programs, which are designed to help young adults learn the necessary skills to live independently, like time management skills, social skills, how to maintain hygiene, and how to be financially stable. Most universities and community colleges have adapted their technology to aid those with disabilities and adapted their devices into assistance devices, such as adaptive services, auxiliary aids, technological enhancements, and accommodations. On the left are a list of um, organizations who have these educational resources. A vocational resources. Being active can help adults with disabilities achieve their mental and physical goals, raise their self-esteem. Our activities can help someone who has trouble with expressing their emotions and feelings and also music therapy. Most people with disabilities respond well to music activities. It gets them in the mood, it draws their attention, Communication and speech, it creates custom songs. It can help increase repetition without isolating sounds. It can also increase the growth and fine motor skills by implement, implementing adaptive and traditional percussion instruments. It can also increase uh, behavioral concerns. You can create music, musical stories and songs to reinforce appropriate behavior. Emotional and social songs can be used to help adults with disabilities identify feelings and utilize coping strategies Anytime they're feeling overwhelmed, you can also increase the quality of life and self-esteem, and uh, create, it creates a successful and possible experience. It can be commemorated through song and musical experience. Occupational resources listed are the job sites for people with disabilities and employers who would like to hire them. Occupational labor market information resources and career information systems. The ADA seeks to prevent discrimination against people with disabilities. It was signed into law on July 26, 1990. The act prohibits private, public, and public organizations from subjecting candidates and employees with disabilities to unfair treatment. There are five sections or titles in the ADA. Title I, Equal Employment Opportunities for, for Individuals with Disabilities. This section is designed to ensure that people with disabilities have equal employment opportunities. It also requires employers to provide reasonable accommodations to employees to ensure that they can perform their work duties. Title II, non-discrimination on the basis of disability in state and local government services. Title II prohibits public entities from discriminating against people on the basis of their disability. From public transportation to many social services, such individuals must be given equal access. Title III, non-discrimination on the basis of disability by public accommodations and in commercial facilities. This section is similar to Title II, except it applies to commercial facilities for providing goods and services to the This includes retail stores, hotels, restaurants, or all among other types of facilities. Title IV, telecommunications. Regulated by the Federal Communications Commission, system of interstate and interstate telecommunications relay services that allow individuals with hearing and speech disabilities to communicate over the telephone. And Title V, miscellaneous provisions. The final title of the ADA discuss, discusses a variety of issues, including the act's relationship to other laws, insurance implications, and conditions that are not legally considered to be disabilities. As Title I relates to employment rights, it's important to take a close look at what rights is what right it grants people with disabilities. Title I, equal employment opportunities for individuals with disabilities. Title I requires that employers provide equal employment opportunities and reasonable accommodations to qualified applicants, employees with disabilities. Examples of reasonable accommodations include physical changes to the workspace to improve accessibility including wider walking paths and wheelchair ramps, assistive technology such as screen reader software or specialized equipment, communication accommodations like providing written material in large print or braille, and policy changes such as allowing services 
service animals into the workplace. The act does not require an employer to provide accommodations that will cause undue fi financial or operational hardships on their business. If you have any questions about specific accommodations requests, your local office of Equal Employment Opportunity Commissions is a great resource for preventing discrimination against employees with disabilities. And that finishes our group project.